what? absolute proof that the motorcycle community is literally about this big. <laughs> we went and shot some great video last month or so yep. at the Cleveland Auto and Aviation Museum right here in downtown Cleveland. Shot some beautiful bikes and ran into one of my new best friends, John from the Crawford, who talked us through some of those awesome bikes. And we had that a great fun. day at the museum, an awesome collection of motorcycles there and cars and planes. Everything under the sun transportation lives there. Yep. And then look who we stumble upon <laughs> here at Beautiful Fuel Cleveland Custom Bike Show here, downtown Cleveland again, as you were heading in with this extraordinary and rare, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I'm gonna win the Unpopular Opinion Award. No, go right ahead. Weird. This bike is just weird, John. It's totally weird. It's that's, totally weird. That's why we love it. It's like an orphan <laughs> child, you know? It's just weird, but weird enough where you go, that's cool. Yeah. And it, the thing is that, you know, here we are at Fuel Cleveland, and I gotta give a shout out to Tyler and Mikey for having us here, and they've been really fantastic and, and wonderful to accommodate us and allow us to bring our bikes. But um, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> what you were gonna say is that, you know, while we are here surrounded by all these super yeah, weird, yeah, yeah. tricked out right. custom bikes, exactly. you had to bring another odd duck Totally that duck. is tricked out in its own way and kind of up the ante talking custom bikes with this beautiful Vincent Black Prince. Well, we, we feel a little bit, you know, embarrassed in that, you know, we've got all these custom builders around who have mad skills and it's really obvious by the quality of the machinery that they've brought. And here we are, we're just dragging something out of mothballs and kind of showing up with it. So, you know, we're, we're not cool, but we brought what we had and hopefully people will like it. Well, it's really nice of you to bring whatever you had laying around. Yeah. That's super generous of you. Um, I'm glad that you dusted the mothballs and cobwebs yeah, off of yeah, this. Yeah. Um, I'm totally joking. I know that this is a bit of a jewel in the crown of your collection. This is a big deal, obviously, the Vincent motorcycle, tons of legacy, yes. very, very expensive, turbo, turbo collectible. A lot of people know Vincent for a lot of things. Um, you know, the twin cylinder Vincent, of course, there's a single cylinder Vincent. Not a lot of people know about this kind of oddity, which is the fully enclosed, fully fared right. twin cylinder Black Prince, mm -hmm. because at the time when this was made, which we're going to talk about in about two seconds, sure. but correct me if I'm wrong, at the time that this was made, this bike with all of this fairing, while very cool and interesting today, kind of went over like a lead balloon. Absolutely. This didn't go like hotcakes when this was released. No, it, it, the fairings, contrary to what most people think, the fairings were not designed for any aerodynamic purposes at all. They were. This bike was essentially designed to allow British working gentlemen to ride their motorcycles to work and not get their clothing dirty. So that's why all of the fiberglass fairings are enclosing virtually everything on the bike. The interesting thing is that this is an evolution of the Vincent Black Shadow, but with the fairings on the bike, this is actually 10 miles an hour slower than an unfaired Black Shadow. So it was purely for cosmetic purposes and had nothing to do with speed or aerodynamics. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of this a little bit. Yep. What year was this manufactured? 1955. Okay. And this was right before Vincent actually went out of business. They, yeah. they made 200 of these. Some of them were sold without the fairings because they had a lot of trouble making them work and they had, this is all hand laid fiberglass. So back, you know, think about 1955, fiberglass work was not particularly advanced and they had a lot of trouble with their supplier doing the fiberglass work because a lot of the panels didn't fit. So some of the bikes actually were sold as Black Princes without the fairings. Interesting. So they look like Black Shadows, but they're actually Black Princes. Interesting. So 1955, just post-war-ish, mm -hmm. and in a little bit. But the thing that we talked about earlier off camera is you mentioned and brought up the fact that all these fully fared machines were really for the purpose of letting the average person get on the road on a motorcycle and stay very clean and very tidy, whether it was men that were riding or women that were riding. That's right. They wanted to stay clean because they needed this to actually be more of like a commuter vehicle yes. to actually get around town. Yep. And you would said that you thought that that was kind of a unique thing. And I said, well, actually, I think what's kind of interesting is at that time, that's also the beginning of scooters as well, 
of the scooter boom for the exact same reason. Yep. Because it had a fairing in the front, it kept the weather off of you, it kept you a little cleaner as you're going down the road. Mm -hmm. And almost every single motorcycle manufacturer also dabbled in this fairinged idea around the late 40s and 50s as well. Everybody kind of got bit by the bug, and this just happened to be the nail in the coffin for the folks over at Vincent. And right. it also was kind of the undoing of several other manufacturers as well. Yep. See, this is where Jackie takes me to school. My knowledge <laughs> is like this, hers is like this. And, you know, my, my ego gets to go like this whenever I'm ta talking to her. So, yeah, have at it, kiddo. That's super, super not true. I just happen to find it a really interesting time because motorcycles literally tell the history of the world through their design. Yes. If you sit and think about this, you can realize that, you know, post-war, roads in England, roads in Central Europe were bombed to the ground. Yes. It was rubble, it was dirt, it yep. was literally dirty. So to ride was very dirty. Mm -hmm. So they started creating solutions to get around that, as well as cars didn't really start taking off then because the economy was in shambles. That's right. So people couldn't afford cars. They had to count on motorcycles, and hence why this huge movement of fully fared or mostly fared machines, the Triumph, the bathtub fared machines, um, Ariel dabbled in a fully fared machine, and then again, European manufacturers jumped on board and started doing the production of scooters a little bit more heavyweight. So that's why I have to kind of get geeked out about this stuff, is because it literally tells the history of the world in a much bigger context, but through motorcycles. Would you like to come work at the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum? <laughs> Only if I get to work with you, John. <laughs> Only if we can work together as a team every single day. Let's do it, man. That's perfect. Well, thanks again for talking us through this rare and super interesting, and I'm going to go ahead and say kind of an odd duck machine, and this is going to be Vincent Black Prince. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, Jackie. Appreciate it. Awesome.